Bakers and joining us this morning, Dr. Hemel Kothry, the Chief Medical Officer for Dignity Health for the Central California Division. He has been joining us every morning here on Sunrise to answer questions and give us an update on coronavirus here in Kern County and across the country. Dr. Kothry, thanks so much for joining us once again, sir. Oh, thank you very much, Maddie. All right, so let's talk about that infamous curve. We like to touch on that every time here. And as of right now, or as of Sunday night, we should say, Johns Hopkins reported more than 143,000 cases of the coronavirus here in Kern County. Now, one week prior, we were only at 43,000 cases. So that's a jump of close to 100,000 cases in one week. The previous week, we only saw a jump of around 40,000 cases in a week. So what explains that huge acceleration in the number of cases? cases that we're seeing and do you expect to see that continue this week? Yeah, I, I think that that's a twofold answer. One, we're uncovering new cases and second, we're getting results on backlog tests. So I think both of those are what's causing some of the increase. Okay, and are we seeing the same sort of thing continuing here in Kern County? Yes, you know, and I know we have, we've, we've processed a lot of tests already, but I know we have over 900 tests that we're still pending processing. So. I expect the, um, the numbers to go up here as well. And again, you think that's due in part at least to a backlog of tests that are now going through? I think so. And I also think, you know, uh, with people becoming more aware of uh, the coronavirus and symptoms, a lot, more, a lot more people are getting tested as well too. So. So let's talk about social distancing. Um, we're now a ways into this and we know we have a ways to go now with the president announcing he's extending those recommendations through April 30th. Is social distancing working? You know, I, I think so. I, I'd hate to see what it, what the numbers would be like if we weren't social distancing. I think, you know, it would be pretty scary. So um, I, I think we, we're still not all doing our part. There's still, I still see groups of people huddle together from time to time. And I think we all need to do our part. So yesterday, the nation's top infectious disease doctor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, we've heard a lot from him uh, over the recent weeks. He told CNN that the coronavirus could kill between 100,000 to 200,000 Americans. Can you explain for our viewers a little bit where that number and that data comes from? So th there's a lot of um, modeling that's done to figure out, okay, if you start seeing numbers like this, where do you predict it to be in two months from now? So. It's a lot of really smart people plugging in numbers and coming up with algorithms that will generate numbers like that. What does that number say to you? Are, are, do you feel like that's a, a target, the close target here? You know, I, I hope he's very wrong. I hope a lot of these people are wrong, and I think we can keep that number down by social distancing. Okay. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I hope, I hope we're all wrong. So because I still hear a lot of comparisons, um, especially across social media, to the flu, can you give us an idea how that number, that projected number, compares to the number of flu deaths we would expect to see in one year across the country? Sure. So the average number, and it's, it's a big number because you know, we have a lot of deaths that we think are flu, uh, ranges anywhere from 30,000 to about 60,000. I think that's what it was for this fiscal year. Any idea how many more COVID-19 cases we could see here in Kern County? How big do you think this could get here? You know, I think, I think we will see a, an, an upswing for sure. Um, I don't know how high we're going to get. Um, I, I think, you know, once again, minimizing social contact, uh, staying at home and do, uh, practicing our social distancing will lower that number for sure. What do you see, what portion of the population do you see being infected with this virus? You know, um, Governor Newsom said um, that he suspects or expects about 56% of the population to get the virus. I think, you know, that could very well happen. Now, not everyone that gets the virus gets very sick. You know, you can have from, it's a spectrum from very mild, from actually no symptoms to very mild symptoms to extremely severe symptoms. So, you know, 56% I think was a stretch at one point. I don't believe it is at this point. Let's talk a little bit about the 1918 flu pandemic um, and how it kind of played out. It's, if there's anything that we can learn from it, it died out over the summer months, but then it resurged again in the fall when cold and flu season came back around. Do you think that we're going to see the same thing happen with COVID-19? Potentially, you know, uh, viruses typically don't like um, high temperatures and high humidity. So as, the, as it warms up and we get into the summer months, we tend to see them die out and then they can resurge and resurface again during the, the fall or winter months.
what are we looking at here if this comes back in the you know next fall and winter months are we looking at a complete replay of what's going on right now well you know what one of the things that's happening right now is you know there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies a lot of researchers a lot of scientists working on a cure for this um or vaccine if you will even so i think people are working really hard to make sure that this doesn't reoccur and, and it's just it's not our country it's the whole world everyone's working on this together and there is a mad dash to come up with some treatments for this. And there are several drugs that are being tested right now. We just heard about a preliminary um, uh, approval for hydroxychloroquine. Um, and that is a drug that doctors hope could stop you from getting COVID-19 if you were to come in contact with someone. What are the, uh, pro what's the process like for getting these drugs tested and actually being used in hospitals? And are we talking months? Are we talking weeks? Are we talking years? Well, so, you know, there's a whole process that the FDA wants us to do when we're, we're testing drugs like this. What the FDA has done is they're fast-tracking everything. We are still recommending that people don't just willy-nilly start taking these drugs. These drugs have their own set of potential side effects. Um, in the hospital setting, we are using some of these drugs, but people are very, uh, they're watched very, very closely. And only, you know, our infectious disease doctors and our uh, critical care doctors are allowed to give these drugs. So... You know, I, I, I urge the public not to just go out and get these drugs and start taking them. Do you have any insight on any of these drugs that you've seen being used and which you think could be most promising and what they actually do? You know, it, it's hard to say right now. We're so early in our trials. Um, the trials will continue. As we get more numbers, we'll have better data. So too early to say right now. If we were to see a big resurgent in, resurgence in the fall, do you think these drugs would be in play by then? Um, you know what, I, if it's not these drugs, some other drugs for sure. Okay. And then lastly, uh, we want to talk about the timing of the tests. We were talking about the backlog earlier and just how long it takes some people to get their results. The FDA recently approved a 15-minute COVID-19 test. How soon could that be used here? So what we in Kern County have already asked for the tests, and the way they're doing is the way they're sending these tests out is they're, they're targeting you know, the hot zones first. And which makes sense, you know, uh, some of the bigger cities that have a lot more cases. So we're, you know, that's how they're prioritizing it. So I'm hoping we were, that we were supposed to get it last week. I'm hoping we get it sometime this week and start processing ourselves. Do we have to run through all of the other tests that take up to days to even, you know, stretch in as long as a week to get the results before we can move on to using these tests that only take minutes? No. Absolutely not. You know, as soon as we get the reagents that we need and the right equipment, we're going to go. Um, it's just, you know, um, the country has to be prioritized. So, you know, these companies are making these products, they're making the reagents, and as soon as they have enough, they're sending it out. I don't think they're holding anything back at all right now. Okay. Dr. Hemel Cothry, thank you so much for joining us. Once again, Dr. Cothry will be joining us every morning on Sunrise, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, he'll be doing a Facebook Live with us and answering your questions. So we will see you again tomorrow morning, Dr. Cothry. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie.